Hello guy welcome back to my channel YouTube speaking news. Today I have good news for share to everyone. 2022 Porsche 911 GTS first drive review, magic in the middle. For 2022, the GTS trim level joins the 911 family. Along with a 473 HP version of the lineup's ubiquitous twin-turbo flat-six, it's available with an 8-speed automatic or 7-speed manual transmission and rear or all-wheel drive. The GTS is offered in all three body styles, too. Its most notable features include a specially tuned suspension, as well as 20-inch front and 21-inch rear wheels with black center locks as seen on the 911 Turbo. Likewise, the GTS inherits larger iron brake rotors from the top tier tur turbo. There's also a lightweight package that removes the rear seats and adds carbon fiber front buckets, lighter glass, and a rear wheel steering system. The 2022 911 receives Porsche's latest infotainment software, including new features such as Android Auto. Based on our experience with myriad 911 models, we can confidently recommend the Carrera S. It boasts 64 horses more than the standard Carrera, and we'd be happy with either the engaging manual transmission or the snappier dual-clutch automatic. Those who want to enjoy their 911 year-round, but have to deal with slippery winter conditions can add all-wheel drive for $7,300 if you feel four winter tires aren't enough. We're content with the coupe body style, especially since the cabriolet costs almost $13,000 more. We'd also opt for the Sport Chrono package that adds launch control, additional drive modes, and more. The Sport Seats Plus provide more supportive front buckets, and the Sport package adds a lowered suspension and a louder exhaust system. Our selection of upgrades would conclude with ventilated front seat cushions, passive entry, a heated multifunction GT steering wheel, and Porsche's dynamic light system plus that features automatic high beams and headlights that swivel in the direction the front tires are pointed. We'd also recommend taking advantage of the Porsche Experience Center. For $395, plus a $50 damage waiver fee, you will be received coaching and track time in your new Porsche at either the Atlanta or Los Angeles location. If you don't live in those areas, you can travel and book time in one of Porsche's vehicles instead. Prices for those experiences range from as low as $400 to as high as $900 depending on location and model. Mounted in the rear of the 911 is a twin-turbo 3.0-liter flat-six cylinder engine. The base Carrera has 379 horsepower, the S pumps out 443 ponies, and the GTS generates 473 horses. While every model comes standard with a ridiculously quick-shifting 8-speed automatic transmission, a sweet 7-speed manual is offered on the S and GTS. The coupe and cabriolet have standard rear-wheel drive, but they can be fitted with all-wheel drive for four-season, high-performance driving. The Targa is all-wheel drive only. We've tested the base Carrera, as well as several variations of the more powerful Carrera S, which proved its prowess at the racetrack and its incredible traction in adverse weather conditions. No matter the application, every 911 has astonishing acceleration, especially when the gleefully good launch control is utilized. Porsche's optional sport exhaust system also helps enhance the experience by providing a fuller engine note. Best of all, the 911 is as comfortable as ever, and also better to drive. Its steering is communicative and brilliantly direct, and the coupe and, and convertible have increased cornering grip and stability. The ride quality is surprisingly supple too, despite the 911's amazing body control, which allow drivers to seamlessly switch between relaxed and spirited romps. With EPA ratings of 18 MPG City and 25 Highway, the Carrera S with the manual transmission is the most fuel-efficient 911. However, other 911 models' fuel economy estimates don't drop much farther from those figures. On our 75 miles per hour highway route, a Carrera and Carrera S, both equipped with automatics, earned impressive results of 33 and 30 mpg. The 911's interior continues to look sophisticated rather than complicated, with a mix of buttons, knobs and touchscreen controls and for the first time ever a large center cup holder. 
The gauge cluster also deviates from history, ditching the mainly analog instruments for mostly digital ones. While these screens have some user experience issues and can be blocked by the steering wheel, the central tachometer still uses a physical needle that follows the engine's revs towards its heavenly 7400 RPM redline. The 911's low-slung driving position and supportive front seats are fantastic, and the steering wheel has a wide range of adjustment. We only wish Porsche used less piano black trim on the center console, provided more interior cubby storage, and gave this icon of a car a grander shifter than the stubby flipper that comes on automatic equipped models. Although the 911 continues to offer seating for up to four in theory, the tiny back seats remain as hostile to adults as they were when 911s first hit the road in the mid-1960s. Every 911 is outfitted with a 10.9-inch touchscreen integrated into the middle of the dashboard. In addition to voice commands and buttons on the steering wheel, the center screen also features rotary push-button controls on the console. The infotainment system supports a Wi-Fi hotspot, wireless Apple CarPlay, and wired Android Auto. Porsche does provide two high-end surround sound systems that include a 12-speaker Bose unit and a 13-speaker Burmester stereo. Thank you for watching my video. Don't forget to subscribe my channel for receiving the news that you see first. Goodbye see you at the next video.